Earth is the only known planet to support life forms, and probably a home planet too. However, a certain species is outgrowing Earth, and might need to find another place to live. Where can they stay? Space is a vast, almost infinite void. With so much space to work with, it is unlikely that Earth is the only planet capable of supporting life forms. And no, Mars doesn't count. To find a suitable planet, we all need to look outside the solar system, discounting the factor of time and its relation to space. How exactly do you find such a planet? Perhaps I should say, such an exoplanet. That means a planet outside of the solar system, because humans still haven't given up on the pre-Copernican notion of being the centre of the universe. Anyways, let's look at Earth to understand what exactly we're looking for. Earth is a rocky planet, with water and an atmosphere. It is located in the habitable zone of the solar system, meaning an area exactly the right distance from the sun to potentially support life forms. The sun itself is also an important factor, as what is considered a habitable zone is relative to its mass and heat. According to scientific studies, there are around 4.1 billion sun-like stars, meaning stars of similar heat and mass to the sun, in the Milky Way galaxy alone. We will be basing the next information on this estimate, limiting our scope to this galaxy, as the broader universe is so incomprehensively vast that trying to calculate the amount of stars in it will probably fry any human's brain. Out of all these sun-like stars, at least 300 million have a rocky planet in the habitable zone. So we have 300 million potential candidates for Earth 2.0. If you only look at the most basic of details, that is. Mars, for example, is a rocky planet near the habitable zone, but a human cannot live on it without a lot of technological assistance. To truly be a potential new Earth, a planet needs an atmosphere. Earth's atmosphere is a layer of gases, the specifics of which we'll get to in a moment, that is retained by the planet's gravity. The atmosphere creates pressure, absorbs ultraviolet light, and regulates the planet's warmth, liquid water, and as a result, life, owe their existence on Earth to the atmosphere. Today, Earth's atmosphere is composed of around 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, 0.9% argon, and other assorted gases. To find a habitable planet, the best option is one with a similar atmosphere, not only in composition, but in thickness too. The atmosphere on Mars, for example, has a similar composition to Earth's, only with more carbon dioxide and no oxygen, but it's way too thin to support any life. But how can anyone know anything about an exoplanet's atmosphere? Well, for starters, colour. No, I'm not joking. The sky on Earth is, when it's daytime, a bright blue, and at night a darker shade of blue. What I'm trying to say is that the sky is blue. And it is that colour because the atmosphere filters out all the light from the sun, except for blue. As you all probably know already, a colour is just another wavelength of light. By looking for exoplanets with a coloured sky, one can recognise which planets actually have atmospheres. This process is called transit spectroscopy, and it is way more difficult than I make it out to be. However, I cannot thoroughly explain transit spectroscopy because I am a high school student and not an educated astronomer. But wait! Going back to the composition of the atmosphere, Earth didn't always have oxygen. When Earth was but a young protoplanet, its atmosphere was made of methane, nitrogen, hydrogen, ammonia, water vapour, hydrogen sulphide, carbon monoxide, and carbon dioxide. No oxygen in sight. Well then, where did the oxygen come from? You would probably assume that life on Earth started because of the oxygen in the air. The truth is quite the opposite. As of now, it is unknown where the first life forms on Earth came from, although the most popular theory seems to be that a meteor brought them along with it when it collided with the planet's surface. This happened before the oxygen became prevalent in the atmosphere. Eventually, the life forms evolved photosynthesis, causing a mass oxygenation event that allowed the life forms to grow to massive sizes. The rest is prehistory. If a planet with a similar atmosphere to early Earth is found, it could slowly be turned habitable via introduction of similar life forms, or even the more complex plants found on Earth today. But in order to bring plants to an exoplanet, first of all we have to find one. The nearest known exoplanet, Proxima Centauri b, is only four light years away from the solar system. The farthest known exoplanet is Kepler 1606 b, at 2870 light years away. Because, again, I am not an educated astronomer, yet, I will not be the one to research these exoplanets. 
I wish the best of luck to whoever decides to do so. Now, the last problem we have to address is actually related to the speed of light. If the fastest thing known to humankind still takes years to travel in space, how is primitive human technology supposed to surpass it? Well, until warp speed is invented or people actually figure out all the quantum physics stuff, we have to make sure that the Earth remains habitable. So please, at least try to reduce your impact on the atmosphere. It's only acceptable when ancient, mysterious single-cell lifeforms do it.